Hello everybody, Chris here. In this video, I wanted to talk about my processes today in creating a character with a full walk and idle animation cycle for each direction. So before I show uh, the work from today, here's roughly what the final result is. Although it's pretty basic, it has all four directions, up, down, left, and right. And in addition to that, I even threw in a hand-waving animation, which was supposed to be like an attack animation if the guy had a spell or anything like that. But you could use it for whatever you wanted. So the name of this character is Ghosty Goat. I wanted him to basically be a really small and cute character. That has a little bit of spookiness going on there, but he's not really that scary. So believe it or not, this is actually my first time ever creating a full sprite sheet for a single character. So obviously this is a bit of a learning process for me. So as is standard in sprite sheets, every square or every frame has its own animation going on. There one frame per 32 pixel by 32 pixel square here. In hindsight, I'm actually thinking that most adult type characters inside of the game, uh, that is characters that stand at an adult character size, are probably going to be two squares tall by one square wide, while the minority of characters, only small things about the size of a dog or a cat, are going to be this 32 pixel by 32 pixel size. So hearkening back to the art style in games like Undertale, although I'm trying to create characters that do seem a little bit monstrous, I'm not entirely sure how aggressive each character is going to be. There are plenty of games out there where characters that may seem kind of aloof, mysterious, or weird actually turn out to be somewhat helpful for your main character. And that may be kind of the direction I take this ghosty goat character. Just a quick note before we move on from the GIMP part directly, I found that taking a look at uh, other sprites that were already out there, like the walk animations between Toriel and Frisk in Undertale, uh, actually helped me a little bit in imagining how the character would walk, though my walk cycle far from perfect, as you can probably imagine. So really quick, this is how the sprite sheet was turning out towards the end there. A little bit of touch-ups, and I did add in um, some extra pixels for color on both the back and the sides of the character. So here we have the character being imported into the Unity scene, and this will probably be the last time we actually see the 2D platformer scene, uh, specifically because this game is not going to be a side-scrolling platformer, it's going to be a top-down 2D RPG, at least for the world system. I did spend quite a bit of time looking through different camera systems that might be out there, including follow cams and uh, accidentally going into 3D territory. But at the end of the day, ironically, um, turns out the best way to get a camera system for your game is basically to just set yourself up with the script you need. In this case, just a non-follow camera that updates to be offset by the target's position is all I really needed. If you want a copy of that super basic script, one of the most recent videos uploaded on this channel is about that and does include a download to the script itself. So here in the background you may notice me setting up the different animations including idle and walk, but I'm doing them individually. I've actually found, remembered rather, that the correct way you do that in the Mechanum editor for Unity is you create what's called a blend tree rather than having individual placements of the animation inside of the animator. In essence, here's a quick look at what it looks like when you do it wrong. And then here's how it looks a lot smoother, a lot nicer, um, and a lot more easy to manage when you actually put everything into blend trees properly. And then you can set up um, basically an axis of variables so that you can control between the different states. It's really helpful for things like up, down, left, right movement. So the last thing I was working on was just to get the camera to follow the character immediately by creating a very basic script, um, rather than having a camera that's like a follow cam. I'm not actually sure if it's because of the Unity editor or because of the follow cam and its position in relation to the character and how it speeds up and slows down, but it, there did seem to be some pixel artifacts in the sprites behind until I was using a uh, camera that's basically instant update to the character's position. So ultimately, once you get the process down for this, I imagine it's going to become a lot easier. That is, uh, animating the frames, putting them into Unity, 
uh, loading them up properly, linking everything together in the Mechanum script editor, and it should be good to go after that. Um, one thing that Unity does have is a animation controller override, so if you've created these uh, animations and the variables that link them all together and make them play, you can just override it for new characters and save yourself some work, so that should be useful for me going forward. So the next day for this, I think we're going to spend some time putting together a proper game map um, where everything tiles properly and we can actually use that potentially as a real stage for the game. So until my next video, I've been Chris. Thanks for watching my game dev vlog and I'll see you in my future content.